Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast where we practice facts over feelings. Let's jump in on the topic at hand. This is the Ohio State-Oregon game last night that was, I mean, quite frankly, an exciting game to watch. A lot of action both sides, a lot of no defense both sides. I think we, I think we see when you're dealing with these high-level offenses that there's really not a whole lot these defenses can do. Um, you, you watch Oregon, every time they score, they have no answer the other direction. Usually what ends up happening, it seems like, with these, these types of games, 32-31 games, is, and while this wasn't an, a high, high-scoring game, this is a high-scoring game for back in my day. Like this stuff right here, I mean, yes, it's this. they put up points, but Oregon had almost 500 yards of offense. Ohio State had 467 yards of offense. They moved the ball. Both teams moved the ball pretty much at will. There wasn't much resistance. And you had a feeling that whoever had the ball at the end was probably going to win the game, except for the fact that Ohio State coach Ryan Day is at the helm. And unfortunately for him, he is turning into that guy that seems to find a way to choke away a game at the end. And you can look at this from a couple of perspectives. Both teams are undefeated. The fact of the matter is Ohio State comes in ranked two, Oregon's ranked three. The new polls are already out, and Ohio State only dropped to number four, which I think is a bit ridiculous. Honestly, I think they should have dropped outside the top five, and Miami should now be in the top five. That's me being a homer. But you can't lose the game and just drop two spots. I'm sorry. Like, nah. You, you, this is the Big Ten privilege, the SEC privilege. They lose, they don't drop. Let an ACC team lose, let a Big 12 team lose, let anybody else lose, they will plummet out of the ranking or they'll drop 10 spots. But Oregon gets this win 32 31. Dylan Gabriel throws for 341. Will Howard throws for 326 for Ohio State. But what you had at the end was a situation in which Ryan Day, the coach of Ohio State, completely effed it up. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they're moving the ball with ease at on this last drive. I mean, there's not again, there's no there's not there's no resistance. I, I was actually a little bit surprised. Oregon is is down 31-29. They get it down to the OSU 1. I, I, I well, they're OSU two, and they get only a yard on a third and goal play. And I'm thinking they might actually go for it. And I'm saying this for a reason because you pretty much knew that Ohio State would get in the field goal range. They would. They were gonna get in the field goal range because Oregon hadn't given any resistance pretty much the entire half. Forget that the half. Most of the game, even I mean, if you look at the possessions. 10 plays, 75 yards. Okay, they had a fumble. There was one punt, another touchdown, another touchdown, and another punt. I mean, they punted three times, but even when they punted, it seemed like more Ohio State stopping Ohio State than Oregon stopping Ohio State. And that's vice versa. Whenever Oregon didn't do didn't move the ball, it was more so Oregon shooting itself in the foot, missing an easy 44-yard field goal, blowing an extra point, going for a two-point play when you probably shouldn't have ha- shouldn't have done so. I, I hate chasing points. It's 14-6. Um, and instead of kicking the extra point to make it 14-13, Dan Lanning, who is a riverboat gambler, goes for two. It's the second quarter. Why are you doing that? Early second quarter. Why are you chasing points? Early in the second quarter, I hate that type of mentality. But for some people, it works. They don't get it. So now they're chasing points the entire game. You know, so you've missed the field goal. You've lost a two point. So they they lost an extra point, another extra point, three points. There's five points right there. If you want to look at this game, actually, the first possession of the game, Oregon had an interception and they did not challenge the play. It was crazy. The, the, guy, the guy for Ohio State comes down. The ball's not secure. The ball's bouncing around his body. And the Oregon kid comes out with the ball. It was an interception. 
and Oregon did not challenge the play. I was shocked. I was shocked. You you challenge that play. That's your ball. And instead, they don't challenge it. And what happens? They end up scoring and making it seven nothing. So you have these types of situations that happen in games, and you don't know that. I, I don't know why you wouldn't have challenged that. I don't care if it's the first possession of the game. You cannot not challenge that situation because it was clear as hell on replay that the ball was just rolling around the guy's chest. It wasn't secure. All the balls everywhere. Um, but realistically, you look at this game. I mean, Oregon's first possession, I mean, punt, touchdown, missed field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown. And then they had a punt to end the first half, which probably don't even know what they were doing. I thought they should have just put their knee down on the halftime. And then they punt open as they get turnover on downs, which that happened. That just – that was crazy enough to me because now you're – see, this is a situation in which it was 28-22 Ohio State, and you're sitting here saying, kick the field goal, make it 28-25, you're within a field goal. But instead, Dan Lanning goes for it. And the play that they ran was utterly terrible. They had – was it first – second and goal from the – from the nine, third, second goal from the nine, they run the ball, get down to the two, and then they pass, pass, and incomplete, incomplete for a team that is really a good running or good running team. So it, it was questionable, if you ask me. But they get the ball right back after forcing a punt, and they score to make it 29 28. Dylan Gabriel goes for a run to finish the drive, a 27 yard run, makes it 29 28. And um, or Ohio State right down the field gets into field goal range, makes it 20, uh, 30, 31, 29, which sets up the final drive for Oregon. I thought they might go for it. I thought they might. But he decides to kick a field goal this time from the one yard line, a 19 yard field goal, and they make it 32, 31. Here's where Ryan Day completely, completely, completely shit the bed. For one, they start off with a sack, then there's a 13-yard completion, an 8-yard completion, a 9-yard completion, a 26-yard completion, and you're sitting here watching Oregon's defense like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know, man. Watching defense today, and it's so hard to play defense now that you don't even know if you can blame these guys for bad defense because they're not even allowed to really play defense. They can't touch the offensive players. They can't really jam them off the line. They can't bang them. They can't breathe on them. You can't hit the quarterback. You, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. It, it's just what's made football, in my opinion, so hard to watch at times is you can't really do much of anything. Now, it's first down and goal. First, 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 first and 10 from the Oregon 28. They're in field goal range. It's a 45-yard field goal. Incomplete pass, second and 10. You have passed to Jeremiah Smith that goes to, 21, to the 21 yard line, but Jeremiah Smith is called for a pass interference. He clearly shoved off. I mean, he two hand shoved the guy so far off. So you're not at the 20, you're not at the 21 now. You're back to the 45. You're back to the 43. Will Harold, Will Howard, incomplete pass. And here's what happened. I'm here. And I, I mean, let me bring it back. This was a completed pass to Jeremiah Smith. The clock will start on the whistle. So you got 22 seconds. They have one timeout. You have to call timeout there if you're Ryan Day. You have to. Why? Because clock is more important than that timeout. You had a situation in which the line didn't get to the line quick enough. Will Howard is screaming to get to the line, snap the ball. And Ryan Day stands there like a freaking chicken with his head cut off. Don't know what to do. Same old crap with Ryan Day. The stuff that he's criticized for losing big games. He lost this game for these guys. He lost. Ryan Day lost this game. I hope I didn't hear his post-game presser, but I hope he got on that stage and said, this is on me. You know, if it was Deion Sanders, he'd never say that. But I would hope they can say, this is on me. Because you have to call time out there. Don't blame the quarterback. I don't care if he's a fifth-year quarterback or a sixth-year quarterback or whatever Will Howard is. I don't care if he's an experienced quarterback. You're still the head coach of this team. It's your job to call time out. So what ends up happening is you're at the 43-yard line, and they burn like seven seconds off the clock just getting lined up, getting the ball snapped. 
was big. And we'll see, and you'll you'll see why. It was big. Incomplete pass. Now you have second and 25 from the 43 with 10 seconds left. Oregon calls timeout. Ohio State, they have a short, an incomplete pass to Jeremiah Smith, um, but there was a penalty for 12 men on the field. So it goes, it brings, it, well, it's, it doesn't really matter. It does bring it to the 38 yard line. See, this is where you have to make a decision. This is where you have to make a decision. Six seconds left, no timeouts. Sorry, one time. You had, no, they had one time. I'm sorry, they had one timeout. Six seconds left, one timeout. Can you get a playoff quick enough? And, and get the timeout. The answer is yes, you can. But it's a it's a three step drop throw. This isn't a throw of I'm dropping seven steps or five steps and I'm looking to chuck it down the field. You're gonna have no time left. This is a three step drop. You're looking for a quick slant play. If you can't get that, you throw the ball into the ground. Well, you throw it away. You can't air mail it away. You have to throw it into the feet of the person. And make it a bullet so that the damn clock is not – you're not going to lose all, all your time. The timeout, that's why the timeout at 22 seconds, it was irrelevant at the end of the game. Because if you had saved your clock, saved that seven seconds, you could have actually run a real play and not had to worry about running a quick slant type of play. Because either which way, it's third and 20 from the 38. You're not going to get a first down, more than likely. So what happens? Will Howard drops back. His first read isn't there. And instead of throwing it away, he takes off. And you're watching him run, and you're sitting there saying, he's going to run out of time. And by the time he slides at the 26-yard line, the game is over. He slid right as it was coming to zero. If he had slid five yards earlier, it's a 50-yard field goal. You take your chances, and you hope you can get, you know, you get your timeout off. But because he 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 was trying to get extra yards, he ran the clock out. Now, whose fault is that? Someone might say it's Will Howard's fault. He needs to know the situation. Yes, I agree. He needs to know the situation. But he's also playing the game, and it's going by a million miles a second. And he's looking at that wherever he was on the field and saying, I don't think my kicker can kick this ball. His career long is like 45 or 46. If I slide to 35, he's, it's a 52-yard field goal. If I slide to 33, it's a 50-yard field goal. I understand his thought process, but it was the wrong thought process. This is on Ryan Day, period. And here's why. You kick the field goal. You, you kick the field goal. It is too risky a situation with six seconds left that if there's any type of pressure with a scramble and how you have not communicated to your quarterback, if you have any pressure, throw the ball away. Don't run. Throw it away. Don't run. Just throw it away. And so the clock runs out. They don't even get the field goal off, and they, they went home with that same timeout. Now, had they called timeout with 22 seconds left, here's what would have happened. Here's what would have happened. Now, I don't know that it would have made a difference because it would have been fourth down. It would have been fourth down. And that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the messy part of it. Actually, here's the thing. You may have had a completely different play ch call chart if you do call timeout, right? So for exactly what happened, him sliding early was bad. I don't know if he could have gotten 20 yards. I don't think he probably could have. But then you run out of clock because you didn't have it. You can't get your field goal team out there fast enough. But I do think you have to call timeout. It's a it's a slippery slope. It's the job of a coach. You're getting paid eight million dollars a year. It's your job to make those decisions. But I think Ryan Day shit the bed here. I think he cost his team a win. I think he actually cost his team a win. And I I would have kicked the fifty five yard field goal. I would have taken a shot, kicked the fifty five yarder. You know what's if he misses, he misses. Here's the thing. With the new playoff system, this game doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who cares? It doesn't make a difference. Because Ohio State is not going to lose to anybody else in this conference. Do they play Penn State this year? Let me see. They play Penn State in two weeks. They play Nebraska. They play, they play, they're going to crush Michigan. Michigan's going to get their ass kicked by these guys. 
Indiana, we'll see. That could be a good game now. I mean, Indiana's doing well right now, but we'll see. I, I think this game doesn't mean anything. I think what's going to be happening is Oregon, Ohio State's going to beat Penn State. They beat them every single time, it seems like. I'm still waiting to see Penn State win that game once. And at the end of the day, Ohio State's going to end up probably playing Oregon for the Big Ten Championship. And it won't even matter if they lose that game either. Because they're still going to get in the playoff. They dropped a fourth. If they win out and play in the Big 12 champ, Big 10 championship, they'll be ranked second or third. Realistically. Now, Oregon, Oregon's a risky team. Oregon plays on the edge. So I could I could actually see Oregon losing a game more than seeing Ohio State lose a game. I mean, Oregon had a 37-34 game versus Boise State. I mean, you know, Ashton Genty's a beast, but they should be beating Boise State by more than that. They got Purdue, Illinois, Michigan, Maryland. Their schedule is kind of thin. It's kind of it's kind of soft. But Ryan Day, bro, you lost this game for your team. Your clock management sucks, and it's just continued to show. And that's why Ohio State fans, for the most part, can't stand you. <laughs> I'm not an Ohio State Ohio State fan, but I know what they say about him. He loses every big game, in their opinion. So. Let me know your Ohio State fans. What do you think? Ohio State fans specifically, what do you think? What do you think he should have done there? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear what you guys say. Of course, be sure to go over here and subscribe to Ruiz Rant at Ruiz Rant on YouTube. And uh, be sure to pound that like button, subscribe to come on now to the podcast, follow, share our video. We really appreciate you. Come on now.